Hey, welcome to Kids Church. Guess what? It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love my dad because he teaches me soccer and takes me out to baseball games. I like my father because he always lets me play on his video games game system and he always lets me have fun. I love my dad because he does art with me and he's super fun. Hi, I love my dad, he's so cool. And he jumped in the pool with me, loves dad. I love my dad because he goes golfing with me. He goes so golfing with I you? I love my dad because he, he takes me on bike rides to get ice cream. I love you, Daddy! Wait, I love you, Daddy! You, Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Happy Father's Day! What I like about my dad is he's always there for me. What I like about my dad is he takes me to school. Bye, Daddy! I love my dad because he's funny and he plays mastermind with me. I love my dad because he's kind, caring, and loves me. I love my dad because he takes us on fun vacations like this one. I love when dad um, makes, me, makes me rocket ships. What I like about my dad is he plays torpedo with me in the pool. I love my dad because he's my best friend and takes me fun places. I like my father because he lets me play on his video game system and loves to grill. Today is all about the fathers and the grandfathers and the godfathers and the role models that God has put in your life to show you what he's like and to remind you of how much he loves you. Uh, today in our story we're going to be hearing though about somebody who doesn't know what God is like. And we're going to see what a big deal that is and how it messes up everything else. Here are a few of our favorite dad jokes. What do you call somebody with no body and no nose? There's no hat. That's There's not it. <laughs> Nobody knows. Oh. Did you get a haircut? No, I got them all cut. Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was gonna tell you a joke about pizza, but it was too cheesy. <laughs> Dad, can you put them on shoes? No, I don't think they'll fit me. Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are for me! <laughs> Wilder, I don't trust stairs. They're up to something. Are they up to the light? Are they up to the sky or the air? Last week we kicked off VBS by having you stop by and pick up your VBS survival pack. Just look how much fun we had. But 
but we are just getting started because this week, starting on Monday, all the way through Friday, you can wake up, tune into our website or YouTube channel and see a brand new VBS video, complete with songs, dances, uh, science projects, crafts, kid vid videos, Bible buddies, Mr. Todd being silly, <laughs> everything you love most about being at church and being at VBS is going to be happening this week. We've been working so hard on these videos, so I hope you'll tune in and enjoy. Um, also, send us a picture of you and your family enjoying VBS, and we will enter you into the calendar of prizes, the ultra calendar for June. I, I can't wait. It's going to be a great week. This week's Bible verse, we started learning it on Mother's Day and we're gonna finish learning it on Father's Day. Here we go, it goes like this. Dear friends, friends. let us love one another cause love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And guess what it means? It means that if you love like God, then God is your father and you're his child. That's awesome. Let's dance. Dance and dance. Dance and dance. If you've been following our SEALS Family Silly Summer Olympics, 
You'll know that last week, Mr. Todd and I tied. So the score is green team one, orange team one. Well, today it's Father's Day edition. So let's see the rules for today's competition. So this event is Father's Day beach ball water bottle bowling. And what they have to do is take the beach ball, bowl it down, and knock over the water bottle. So first up, we have Griffin Seals for the orange team this week. The contestants will have two bowls each to get all the bottles down. All right, Griffin, let's see what you got. Okay, air ball. Let's try one more time. You got one more ball left. Oh, nice. Next up, we have the father himself, Mr. Todd, representing the green team this week. Let's see what he's got in the Father's Day beach ball water bottle bowling Olympics. All right. Number one on Father's Day, here we go. Oh, and it's an air ball. All right, bowl number two. Oh, we're granny styling it for Father's Day. Oh, one, two, three down. And we have a winner. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Our second event is the Super Dad Water Balloon Splash Ring Toss. Each contestant gets three water balloons that they have to toss through the splash ring that may not be still. It may be moving. I don't know. So let's see what happens. All right, first up we have Rain representing the orange team on this second game. Oh, we got a miss. I don't know, maybe you should get half a point for bouncing it off. All right, Rain, toss number two. It's moving. Did that go through? No. no. Toss number three in the Super Dad water balloon. Oh, no, didn't. Up next, we have the Super Dad himself on the Super Dad water balloon splash ring toss. All right, Super Dad. Let's see what you got. I gotta get uh, two points to win? Yes. Oh! Gotta bounce off the ring. Oh, we got another bounce. I lose. <laughs> well, as you can see, that did not go as planned but we are even again with a win for the green team and a win for the orange team today, which puts the tally at two for each. And I'm dry and range not. Have a great week. See you next week. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to the kids' sermon. Happy Father's Day! This week we are all taking stock of the awesome men in our lives. The ones we look up to. The ones we learn some of life's most important lessons from. Lessons about the right way to do things. Or why we should never sell ourselves short. Or give up when the going gets tough. Or miss out on a chance to play or laugh. Or learn something new. This week, we're celebrating our grandfathers and our father fathers and our father figures because without them, life would be a lot less beautiful. So, if any of you dads or granddads or adopted dads are listening in right now, thank you. Thank you for inspiring us, partnering with us, providing for us, and being so very great that we just can't wait to grow up and be like you. Or, you know, at least hopefully a slightly cooler version of you. 
No. In all seriousness, to all the good guys in our lives, we love you. And we really need you, those good guys. Because can you imagine, kids, what would happen if the person you most looked up to and wanted to be like, right, the me to your mini-me, if they turned out to not actually be a good guy at all, but was instead an imposter who had tricked you, I mean, you would be so mixed up. Especially if you were left wondering about the very nature and character of your father. Whoa! <laughs> well, <laughs> that is exactly what happens in today's Bible story. Someone is about to get a major reality check about everything they hold dear. And, spoiler alert, it's going to turn out that their real father is actually good and more loving than the guy could have ever even imagined. Yep, today we're hearing a story with a really awful beginning and a rather beautiful ending. And that really awful beginning is actually last week's not-so-awful ending, just viewed from a different perspective. Do you remember it? Our friend Stephen, one of Jesus' friends and followers, an impressive preacher, and also a man that the disciples had put in charge of feeding the growing number of baptized believers, right? The Christians who at that time were not yet um, being called Christians, but would have been called the followers of the way. But anyway, this guy, Stephen, was not only wrongly accused of disrespecting and telling lies about God and about Moses, but even after he had gotten up and preached and explained to these people all about Jesus and more than proven all of these accusations against him to be false, just totally false, he was suddenly dragged out and viciously attacked. And it's here, on Stephen's very last day, where we have our very first encounter with an especially confused young man named Saul. Now, Saul is so confused, he doesn't even know yet that he is confused, if that makes sense. Saul is just all turned around. <laughs> and here's why. Right from the beginning, Saul had had a really great life. It's true. He was born into a prestigious family from the tribe of Benjamin. He had studied scripture from a very young age, just like you. And he had even had the very best Bible teacher, someone way better than me, as his mentor. A man renowned throughout history ever after. Um, it was a man named Gamaliel, the elder. It was snooty stuff. Yeah. And Saul was also a fully-fledged citizen of the Roman Empire, and he wasn't just the son of a Pharisee. He had become one himself. He was like Pharisee royalty. And I gotta tell you something about Saul's lovely life and all of his accomplishments, and this probably shouldn't shock you too much. But he was pretty happy about it. <laughs> he was. He liked being fancier and smarter than almost everyone else around him. In fact, he liked it so much that when Jesus came along and said things like, the little children and the poor and the sinners are more likely to be in heaven than these Pharisees, it was pretty upsetting for him. And when Jesus said things like that the hearts of the Pharisees were full of greed, or in Matthew 23, here I'll read it for you, Jesus said that the Pharisees were nothing but show-offs. They were like tombs that had been whitewashed. Here's what he says. He says, on the outside they are beautiful, but inside they are full of bones and filths. Ooh, filth, filth. It's a bad sounding word and it means bad stuff. Yeah, Jesus told them that on the outside the Pharisees looked really good, but on the inside they were full of evil and they were just pretending to be good. So these words and teachings from Jesus really upset Saul and the other religious leaders. It made them angry. They liked thinking of themselves as better than everyone else, you know, which, hello, was the problem. If you think that you're better than others, then you are not loving others. You're not. So... Instead of making Saul take a look at his own heart, um, he just decided, instead of looking at his own heart, he decided 
to be against Jesus. So imagine how upset he was when all these other people started looking at their heart and changing. And thousands and thousands of people were starting to believe in Jesus, even though they had tried to, they had, you know, killed him and he'd come back to life. And now all these people are believing. And even the priests were starting to believe in Jesus. And even some of the Pharisees, some of Saul's friends, he was just now like, no, this was the worst case scenario. And remember, their anger was building and building. And then last week, we saw that anger get taken out on poor Stephen. Um, and Stephen was able to reveal Jesus's beautiful love, though, where even as he was being attacked, he was saying, um, he was asking God to forgive his attackers, and he wasn't fighting back. And one of the people who was standing there, look, it was Saul. Now, Saul was not touched at that moment. In fact, Scripture tells us he stood there and he approved of what the men were doing, which is a terrible thing. And his anger continued to grow so much so that he went to the head priest and he got a special letter that said that he was allowed to arrest any followers of the way from that day forward. And I just want you to realize how privileged Saul is if he's able to have a connection like that with the high priest. Whoa. Well, this made the followers of the way have to flee for their lives. And when Saul would find them, he would arrest them, men and women, and lock them up, drag them back to Jerusalem and put them on trial even having some of them killed. Now, God was not shocked by this, right? No, God used it. In fact, the followers of Jesus now were spreading out into Samaria and going as far um, as, as some of the outer regions there. And the fact that they were going so far made Saul even more full of evil ideas. And he decided to go now to the head priest and, and get permission to not just pursue Christians or followers of the way within Jerusalem, but to chase them wherever they may be throughout all of the earth and to bring them back to Jerusalem to put them in jail. Now, I've got to tell you the really weird part about all of this, as if it wasn't weird enough already, because this guy just seems so evil. But Saul thought everything he was doing was good. And I don't just mean that it was good for him, but he thought that what he was doing was good for God. So much so that he thought that God thought that what he was doing was good. Yeah, and if you find that a little bit confusing, <laughs> like you should, like how, how could doing this to, to people be good? Um, well, what you have to know is Saul did not understand the character of God. He did not know his heavenly father. He thought he knew him, but the, the way he saw God was, was false. It was, it was a wrong view. He did not understand the heart of God. For instance, uh, Saul thought that it was all about following the law. He didn't understand that you can't follow the law unless you've had your heart changed and the law is written on your heart. Another thing, Saul thought that he was supposed to create purity for his people by getting anybody who did something different or sinners and kicking them out. But Jesus showed us, no, purity had to come from our own hearts. And that purity could only come from God. And for instance, Saul thought it was important to follow all of these rituals. He thought that was like the most important thing. But Jesus revealed to us what those rituals were trying to point us towards was actually a bigger story about who God is. And, and so Saul just didn't get it. He didn't get that Jesus was the one who revealed the character of God. If you don't know Jesus then you don't know God because you don't know what he's like. And if you keep thinking that God the Father is different from Jesus, well, then you might be missing it too. So for instance, um, you know, he didn't understand that most basic verse that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God, our Father in heaven, he always looks like self-sacrificial love. And when we have that same love, we're his children, just like in our verse today. Okay, well, Saul didn't get it, but all of that is about to change. So as you guys know, he's got his letter, he's working, he's got this group of people, they're all going to go, they're planning to attack the Christians, when all of a sudden, this happens.
Wow! And the light just keeps getting brighter. And all of a sudden, a voice says to Saul, 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 why do you persecute me? And, and Saul falls back onto the ground. And here, I'm going to read for you what happens next. Saul yells out. He says, who are you, Lord? I mean, it's like he immediately knows he's in the presence of something really, really special. And the reply came, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. But get up, Saul, and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. And just like that, it was over. You guys, he, he'd been bathed in this light. All of a sudden, he'd fallen to the ground. And now everything was different. Look what happens next. This is um, in Acts 9. Verse 7, the men who were traveling with him stood speechless. They, they didn't know what to say because they too had heard the voice, but they hadn't seen anyone. So that had just been Saul who saw somebody, who saw Jesus. Saul got up from the ground and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. He was blind. So they led him by the hand and they brought him into Damascus. And for three days, he was without sight, and he didn't eat, and he didn't drink. Wow. He just thought. He was just there in the darkness. And just think, in this one moment, God had taken the hard exterior of, of Saul's heart, and he'd broken through it. And, and suddenly, the thing that seemed most impossible, which was Saul ever turning and finding Jesus, was now suddenly possible. And you guys, there were things that God wanted Saul to see. And that's why he let him be blind like that, right? Because Saul had, had, had been so about how fancy he was and how important he was. And just like that, God made him like a, one of the beggars. He was suddenly disabled. And remember, we heard last week that the disabled had, to, had nothing. Um, and in this one moment, this one encounter with Jesus, Saul went from thinking about his big to-do list to just thinking about that one image that was seared on into his mind, right? That the image of Jesus. And in that one moment, suddenly Saul's only friends were now the same people he had been persecuting, those followers of Jesus, the same people who he had been the biggest bully to. They were now the only friends he could have in the whole world. So what do you guys think is gonna happen next? Well, I'll tell you, you get to find out tomorrow. <laughs> yes, this story continues at the very first day of VBS. So wake up in the morning and tune in. You've got to see what happens next, you guys. How amazing. What a quick turnaround. What a difference it knows to really know who your Heavenly Father is and to know that His character looks like Jesus. Hey guys, I'm excited to announce that this month's Calendar of Prizes Grand Prize is going to be this! An awesome 52 piece set microscope kit which you're going to be able to see all kinds of amazing things about the world that God has made in this puppy. You're going to be able to see cells and nuclei and absolutely everything about what's inside your slime. <laughs> so um, if you would like a chance to win this, all you have to do is send us pictures of you doing VBS this week or answer our Kahoot questions, which you'll learn more about tomorrow. Um, it's basically a really cool game that you get to play with us. All right, um, I'm excited. We'll be drawing a name out of the calendar next week. Tune in, see you then. Let's wrap this up. So in honor of Father's Day, I'm gonna teach you guys a lesson that my father taught me that really changed my life. He's a pastor. So you guys know that in this world, there are a lot of people and some of them make some pretty sad choices. Some of them do some evil things and a lot of times there are bullies around us. Now the world tells us when we encounter a bully that we should just ignore them or tell on them 
or stand up to them, or fight back, or put them in jail, or mow them over. But Jesus always said that we should love them. And I know what you're thinking. Hey, that's what Stephen did, and it didn't go so well for him. (laughs) Well, I want to remind you to always look deeper. You guys, Stephen's experience was a beautiful one. He was surrounded by God's presence. He had the Holy Spirit's power, love, and self-control right to the end, so much so that he was able to ask God to forgive his enemies even while they were hurting him. Him, and then he stepped right into the arms of Jesus. Witnessing this affected his enemies for the rest of their lives. And, and one cool thing about the story of Saul is that it proves this. When Saul's heart was transformed by Jesus, it was his account of Stephen's um, death that ended up making it to to Luke and being recorded in the Bible so that you and I can know it too. Paul was, Saul was forever affected by this thing he had seen Stephen do. Jesus really had changed everything. He had transformed Stephen's enemies into his friends. And you guys, That same thing is what Jesus wants to do in your life, in your neighborhood, in your school. He wants you to shine out Jesus' self-sacrificial love so much so that it wows all the people around you and it makes them wonder more about this Jesus. And in fact, your love can change your enemies into your friends with Jesus' help. Jesus really changes everything. I love you guys. Have a great week. Um, Enjoy VBS. See you next week.